You're listening to Radio Multiverse. The year is 1876. A vengeful shaman named Raven opened the gateway to hell, releasing the Manitous, demonic creatures that flood the world with magic and monsters. Some heroes have learned to harness this power to fight the growing evil, while others rely on their blazing six guns and weird science. As some are too tough to die and come back from the grave, wrestling a manitou for incredible power and their very soul. Welcome to Deadlands, the Weird West. Greetings and welcome everybody to Radio Multiverse. Yes, we're back after a very, very long hiatus. I'm your host, Ramsey, and today I'm joined by these guys! Dawa! <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Dawa. I'll be the I'll be the storyteller, DM, GM, whatever you want to call it, or Marshall as they call us in these here parts. And Nico. Hello, I'm the uh the Shut bounty up. hunter guy. <laughs> and uh, lastly, Richard. What's up, people? Name's Richard. I'm the only American in this group, and uh, I'm the comic relief. Or so he <laughs> likes to think. <laughs> anyway, today it's... marks the beginning of what hopefully will become a regular installment, which I'd like to call Radio Multiverse RPG. Here we play a variety of tabletop RPGs like Mutants and Masterminds, Exalted, Savage Worlds, Pathfinder, Fate, and who knows what else we might try in the future. Hopefully you'll be entertained by our antics, and uh, maybe you'll want to pick up one of these games and try them for yourself, who knows. At the moment uh, we take turns in running the game, usually this is done by either myself or Dawa. This way, everyone has a chance to play, and it's not always the same guy who has to do all the work. Today, our Game Master is Dawa, and I think he has a game called Deadlands prepared for us all. Dawa, care to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, yes, Ramses, indeed I will. Now, um, we'll be... Uh... We'll be playing Deadlands. Deadlands is one of my favorite settings. Uh, one of my favorite settings. It match. It mixes and matches alternate history, western, uh, steampunk, and a lot of other varieties of uh, settings. The game is set in the United States in the last quarter of the 19th century. However, not all is not all is as you would remember from my history lessons. Uh, we start off in the year 1877, 1877, yes I pronounced that correctly, and the civil war is still going strong. Um, and that's, this is due to, well, various reasons. One of them is, is, the, is the discovery of a strange new material called ghost rock. It burns like coal, but much, much longer. And this has led to all manner of crazy inventions and wonderful ways of prolonging this bloody war. Um, what else? Ah yes, there's also other things going along, but most people think that's just all just hogwash and superstition. Oops. And on the game, yes, the game uh, plays, uh, this, this introductory game plays in Arizona. That would be in the, that would be in the Confederacy. Or Dixie for you uh, history lovers. Um, I think that will be enough. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, personally, I'd like to uh, point out that the game system we'll be using today is Dawa's own modified version of uh, Savage Worlds. Right, Dawa? Yes. I have changed a few things, basically uh, removing a few things that it did not understand at first sight. <laughs> Making right. it easier for myself to run this new system. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get a quin with today's player characters. Richard, would you like to introduce your character to us? Yes, I would. My character is named Akavarius Mordekaiser. Oh, wow. Akavarius Mordekaiser is a steam wizard. He believes that the entire world is a machine that runs on steam, and he uses the power of steam 
to manipulate the his surroundings to his will. Uh-huh. And he's a little bit crazy. Just a little bit. All right. But then again, in this world, who isn't? Uh, Nico, mm-hmm. I heard you also have a new character. Tell us about mm-hmm. that. Yes, I do. I play a bash gun for hire. Simply called John. A very modest looking guy. Uh, and that's really it. He is just there collecting the trophy, uh, taking out bad guys, and all that kind of stuff bounty hunters usually do. All right. Cool. And last but not least, I'll be playing Abraham Flint, a middle-aged man who used to be a peaceful farmer up until the day the living dead came to his doorstep and killed his family. Now he's a man on a mission from God, a mission to kill all undead playing the land. Well, without further ado, let's get started with today's game. Take us away, Mr. Game Master. I can show you the world. Tower, that's your cue. Shining, shimmering, splendid. I know. I know. Somebody uh, walked in on me and had to ask a ask to ask a, had to ask a very important question. Okay. Right. Now. We have we have we have introduced our characters and uh, the heroes for today, and we're going to start off nice and easy. You are all sitting. You are you are seated in or around a uh, rolling steam coach, uh, sorry, stage coach, which is headed towards the little town of Hope, of Hope, uh, uh, of Hope Springs. Now. You're not the only ones in the stagecoach. It's uh, it's roomy, which is good. Uh, uh, inside the in, inside the stagecoach is uh, Elina Vespa, uh, Vespers, a shy little girl who likes to read a lot. Uh, or overlooking her, uh, making sure that she comes to no harm, is Miss Hoffer, who is a uh, stern-faced, uh, stern-faced, thirty-year-old, thirty-year-old woman. Uh, driving the coach is Grumby. His actual name is Bartlesby, but due to his demeanor, everybody calls him Grumby. Uh, riding shotgun is Fred. Fred Red Redmond, who is, the, who is the, the one who always tries to cheer people up with a song or a story. In fact, he rarely shuts up. Now, oh yes, I've forgotten the last one. Uh, that will be Missionary P- uh, Paulson. Who is this? Who is a genial? Uh, who is a genial uh, fellow who looks like who looks older than his age. He's how to put it. He's got a few bits of grey in his hair, and he speaks and he speaks with a what uh, a more uh, gentrified vo- tone of voice. You can see that he is learned and he has seen a few things. Now, these are your fellow travelers. Where are you seated? Um, well, I would probably be seated somewhere near the engine compartment because... Sorry, my apologies. A stagecoach. Normal, basic, horse-driven stagecoach. Ah, then... Oh, dear, where do we be cramped? I'd just be seated in the very back, minding my own business, playing with my wands. Mm Mm-hmm. And you, Nico. Uh, I'd probably be seated somewhere in the edges, uh, sitting very leisurely uh, with his cowboy hat tilt back and act twirling his uh, pistol around. <laughs> okay. Totally and not uh, threatening. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Anyone with a keen eye can see that the ro- revolver is not actually loaded at the moment. Still, Miss Hoffman uh, <clears throat> glares at you and goes... <clears throat> Kind sir, would you please cease your display of bravado? I'm certain that we are all very, very impressed with your dexterity. But enough is enough. Don't you agree? Uh, he frowns a little bit and goes, but ma'am, the gun is not loaded. Still, <coughs> is that so? Still, it's still a very bad example for young Aileen here. After all... What what would the parents think if she if she picked up such habits herself? Uh, he sighs and goes, 
maybe you got a point, and then he just like twirls the gun into the holster and frowns and goes, better now? Why, thank you. I'm much obliged. Of, Aileen has has now uh, taken advantage of her um, of her custodian's lapse in uh, vigilance, and she leans over to study the, the devices that uh, Akaviri, Akavarius is uh, playing with, uh, is uh, filling with. As he goes, is that a manifold adjuster? Yes, yes, it is. Would you like to see what it does? <laughs> Oh, could you it, just silently? I don't want my nanny to find out. Oh, oh, of course, of course. And what he does is he takes out the wand, his uh, special coil-inducing etheric steam manipulation wand, mm -hmm. and uh, says, all right, now what you do is you twist this knob here, and you, yes, play, yes. Uh, you play around with this little gadget right here, and then you press uh -huh. that button and watch as a gust of air just shoots up her uh, her nanny's skirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. That, that's Rosset and the translation and an ire of Miss Hawthorne. I say, what was that? He puts the wand away. Looking <laughs> as innocent as possible. <laughs> She looks sternly at. Hmm. Miss Holford gets a distinct impression that she's uh, surrounded by hoodlums. <laughs> I'm a nice Aileen, guy. I, Aileen, I think it will be best for you to return to your studies, for these louts are rather. are not a prime example of, of how men should act. In my own opinion. Yes. Louts? My dear lady, I am an esteemed, esteemed scientist. Acavarius Mordekaiser, thank you very much. I am no lout. I am a very brilliant man with a very brilliant mind. So I would appreciate it if you would not call me a lout anymore. However, I cannot speak for these others. Now, <laughs> ah, so you, so you have, at what university have you, uh, have you uh, perchance purchase, purchase your degree, good sir? Okay, out of character, I have no idea what university is I would have attended. Say something. Okay. Um, he says, I have purchased my my uh, doctorate in science at the academy of the born child of born child academy. Hmm. Ah. Purchase it then. What a pity. And what was your what was your field of study? Science. General science, experimentation, invention, electronication, things of that nature. Hmm. I see. Not very ladylike uh, studies, I, I would fear. <laughs> Do I look like a lady? Please. No, but Aileen is growing up to be a proper lady. Not one of those rough-housing mad women that, that, uh, Trump, that uh, ride around these parts. Mm -hmm. Well, if she would like to... Uh look at ladylike studies, then no, Born Child Academy would not be good for her. Indeed. Now, Aileen, dear, uh, why don't you start your studies? Why don't you just read up on chapter 5, I think we were at. She sighs, and Aileen sighs, rolls her eyes, and then goes, yes, Miss Hawthorne. And... Well, she gives you this. She gives Akaviri various this puppy eye, uh, this puppy eye look of please. Meanwhile, as this is going on, um, I'll turn my uh, yes, indeed, I'll turn my eye to uh, Ramses and see where are you seated. Well, uh, Flint's probably uh, seated uh, somewhere uh, near the windows, probably in the middle, because he's more a social kind of uh, guy. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, at the moment, he is probably looks like he's sleeping with his uh, hat uh, pulled over his eyes. But then mm-hmm. again, it, with his uh, from from the looks of his of his gray hair, he's he's not really as 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 young as a lot of the people here in this coach. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, from your vantage point, you have a clear line of air. Uh, uh, yes, a clear line of air to the to the other preacher who is quite who is uh, quietly mumbling a prayer, as though he, occasionally he stops and. Starts back and re- and returns to reading a certain passage hour uh, in a mumbling voice. It sounds like he's practicing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, yes. Now, uh, Akivarius, do you wish to do anything more about uh, the 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 girl and her nanny? Um, I, I'm gonna wait for her nanny to kind of look in the other direction, and I'm going to slip a note to the little girl that uh, on a uh, design for uh, a, a smaller version of the uh, etheric steam manipulation wand. All right, that sounds like you're going to do some filching. So you may rule for that and see if you can get it past to Miss Hawthorn. Hawthorn. No, oh, I thought that would be nimbleness. But okay. Uh, no. no, it's fil- it's filching. All right. It's so... uh, everything that's related to uh, stealing things. Gotcha. So I don't have a filching score, so that'd be a D4, right? Oh, yeah, D4 then. So that's and D4 your D4 and, and your D6. wild die. And your wild die. There we go. Thank you, Ramses. Oh. Let's see what happens. Ooh! Wow. Wow. Aced. You, you aced, aced that the, one. You may so, roll the D6 again and add whatever next comes to your 6. Oh, starting out strong. Nine. Sweet. Yeah, that's so a, that's a total... That's actually... That is a 9. That is a success uh, and a raise. So you, so you can, so you slip the, uh, so you can slip the, the design uh, to uh, Eileen without trouble, and also a few spare parts if you want. Yes, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I've got to, uh, you know, I, I've got to make the younger generation understand the power of steam and that the world is. But one machine. Indeed. And just as you do that, there is a, there's a new distraction for you. Guns are being fired. And a loud voice goes, uh, Hold up, hold up. This is a hold up. Put him in the air. <laughs> you may at least hear somebody going, <laughs> What in <tarnation?" laughs> oh, cool. yeah, John, John immediately loads up his uh, pistol. Mm-hmm. I, you see Akavarius pull out two devices. First is his camera. Second is his uh, wand of deterrence. You have a camera? Yeah, the perfidious oh. camera obscura. Ah, right, okay. I was thinking of the uh, of our photograph-making machine. Right. No. It, Actually, so Abraham no, slowly faithful. raises up his hat. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, you hear Grumb- uh, You hear Grum- uh, Grumby going. Oh, what are you sticking varmints up to? We don't got nothing. Just don't waste the ammo. Just go away. Did- we're on back. On- we're late on schedule anyway. Just why don't you just? Uh, why don't you just go? To which, of course, the man. Ah, and he goes. Ha! That's something that we'll decide. Come on, boys. <laughs> Let's let's pull out all the treasure, and don't forget that we got to kill all the priests. Yeah, I'm I, I'm <sighs> feeling personally assaulted here. Um, <laughs> can can you open the uh, the windows? Uh, yes. The coach. Okay. Yes. Windows, doors, you can open them. Um. Abraham like like calmly opens a uh, window and he sticks out his head. And uh, can I can I see the, the criminals? 
yes, you can see the criminals. It's um, it's this big, it's a big, um, uh, big bulky black man with a big, with a huge grin on his face, wielding um two, uh, wielding two uh, uh, revolvers like a true desperado. Right around him are a couple of uh, other. Um, uh, uh, filthy looking varmints that uh, look like they haven't seen a bath okay. this year. Uh, I, I look at them and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I say in a uh, calm but clearly audible voice, Hey, you boys might want to keep down the commotions. There, there's children in this here wagon. We don't want no trouble. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of the, 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 uh, the what looks to be the, the scrawniest of them all just turns around, levels an oversized rifle at you, at you, and go, "Hey, you! Just calm down, and we're all going to be fine. Just mind the children, and just hand over all your valuables and your priests, all of them." <laughs> <laughs> if rouse at them. You boys wouldn't happen to be Satan lovers now, would you? Hell no. I was proud. I was born and raised a good Christian. Then what do you want with preachers, son? Well, we go here. There, there's, there's going. There, there are black preachers on this uh, damn coach, and we're going to make the world a little brighter. That's so. Hold on a second. <laughs> he closes the, the window again. Now, um, mm -hmm. do I have any kind of power to detect evil or something? I don't think so, but I'll better ask you since you're the knowledgeable one. Uh, no. You do not have the power to detect evil. Crap. Well, let you my... Have, uh, you, you do have a cr holy cross. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And he, and he, and uh, like, like uh, Abraham gets up and he, and he says, "Those boys out there seem to think there's some black preachers in this here wagon, but I, I just think they're just spouting bull." But anyway, he just like fiddles in his pockets and he gets out a big, uh, big wooden cross. I'm certain if there were any Satan worshippers in this here wagon. They would not take kindly to somebody pointing the holy cross at them. <laughs> he just like starts like waving it around to see like if there's any reaction. <laughs> um, well, the there is a reaction. The uh, the missionary looks quite pale and startled. He also holds up his own cross and starts praying. Uh, Miss Hawthorne uh, tells Aileen uh, uh, has already grabbed Aileen and and, clutch, and clutches the little child to her chest, and she's holding her a little awkwardly. Hmm. So awkwardly, how so? Good question. Um, you may roll a scrutinize. Yeah, scrutinize. scrutinize. Me too. Uh, yeah, who goes first? Whomever. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it then. I'll, oh, okay. Go for it. Uh, it's a... Uh, that could have been better. A four. <laughs> Alright, you just noticed that she's holding the, the child a little, or a little strange-like. Hmm. But... Ooh, Ooh, Snake Eyes! Snake Eyes! <laughs> now, for those who are not present, Snake Eyes means that you've just gone bust. And that means that bad stuff happens. Uh, I'm gonna roll as well, just to get a hang of the... Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Let's see... Ah, that's it. Ooh, five. That's five. A there you go. Okay. Uh, then only, no, let's go for the snake eyes. She's the Satan worshipper. She's going to cast a spell. You're sure of it? I point my hand at the lady and I say, Satan worshipper, get her out of here. She's going to kill that little girl. <laughs> and Rav easily goes, now let's let's all calm down and be rational about this and let's not jump to any conclusions, all right?
right? Look at the way she's holding the little girl. That is a Satan worshiper if I've ever seen one, and she is going to hurt that little girl, and you cannot let that little girl get hurt. I'm going to cry, man. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> right, just calm down, son. Everything's going to be all right. You hear? No, it's not, because if, if that little girl gets hurt, then we're not going to have another steam. <sighs> breathe, breathe. My doctor said breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Abraham is probably thinking that, uh, I'm sorry, Richard, what was your character's name again? Akavarius Mordekaiser. Akavarius. He probably starts thinking Akavarius is like the, the Black Preacher or something. <laughs> He's the one acting peculiar. Mm-hmm. Right. Now a couple of guys um, walk uh, walk up to your um, to your coach and stick in all stick in um, uh, old looking revolvers and din and how and uh, how, uh, slip shot repaired uh, rifles into the into the the, the the caboose. Open up the door and go. All right. Give me wait. Which one? Yeah. I'm still Get standing me. there with the cross, <laughs> so I'm probably attracting attention. <laughs> Ah yeah, <laughs> right. There's this. There's the priest. Let's kill him. Oh wait, there's a little girl here. We can't just get out of the, get out of the coach, priest. Wait, another one goes. Hey, Bob. Hey, no, sorry. Hey, Dave. There's another one. What? Two? It should only be one. Dave. Yeah, two. Right. All right. Both of you, get out. For the little girl's <laughs> sake. I luckily my code forbids me to just. To just uh, bl blast them, uh, you, you just kill them on the spot. So I'm, uh, I have to like do as they say, at least for now. Mhm. Mm All right. Then they, hmm. And one goes, you know, we could get a very nice price for the. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yeah, well, let's first see what you do as the, the priest. Uh, Yes, let's see first see what you wish to do. Are you talking to me? Uh, well, yes, Abram is going to get out of the coach. What does the rest? Yeah, he puts he puts his cross back in his pocket and he and he holds up his hand and he goes outside and like turns turns around before he leaves. Like, Don't worry, folks, everything's gonna be all right. And then he and he gets out. He just tries to reassure everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I shake my head. No, no, it's not gonna be all right. And oh, can I, I actually do a persuasion roll to try to, to try to like keep uh, keep people from like uh, losing their calm? Yes, indeed, you can. All right, let's let's go for it. Well, whoops! I was supposed to put them over there. Now, John, you know how these kinds of things go. You're yeah. going to be you're, you're going to lose a lot of Bad. money. A tree. <laughs> that could have been better. You're going a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money and these folk don't really look like the kind that will let you go. Uh, I was going, I was actually going, I was actually going, going to hmm? Yes. Besides, they're going to kill a priest. That ain't good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was Abraham actually going actually, to ask. Abraham mm -hmm. actually doesn't look like a priest. He just looks like a cowboy with his with his long coat and his uh, wide brimmed hat. hat. But yeah, Big he's waving cross. a cross around. So. 